Hate give us, give us the YouTube comments. face for Bewildered Man. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> wow. Hello and welcome to the Abroad Japan podcast. Probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host, Chris Broad, and we're joined, as always, by England's top Japan enthusiast, Mr. Pete Dawson himself. Pete, how the devil are you doing? What's going on? Howdy, Chris. Um, I have decided to um, start a little bit of a uh, Japanese hustle. Um, there's a man who was arrested uh, in Osaka uh, mm. this week, and this is not our new story, but I think it's such a good little plan. Um, he got arrested uh, for um, impersonating a policeman. Oh, my um, God. He was not arrested um, in full police garb. He wasn't dressed as a policeman. Uh, he just had a tie with the word police written on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think what the fuck? that law energy hustle um, really speaks to my uh, inner <laughs> criminal because he's not really worked very hard on that. He <laughs> There's a bit of plausible deniability there because he's like going, well, when he got a tie on St. Police, and it's, just, it's just a tie, <laughs> it's, you know, it's a tie. Uh, basically, he approached a woman and said... Um, and basically asked her for money, basically. He said uh, uh, that he was the Osaka Prefectural pr- Police. Uh, he explained um, whatever she was doing was against the law and it could result in a fine of um, three grand. But if she just gave him whatever money she had in her pockets, mm. he wouldn't arrest her. Um, and I, I believe that um, she, she went back into a restaurant that she was uh, working at um, and the manager just called the real police and the man got arrested. What the heck? <laughs> that's so weird. The police tie man. I, th- I think that's fantastic. It's such a such a low energy, <laughs> low low input sort of hustle. I yeah, just, I'm the police. Did the what, woman not what, have you got it? a warrant? She, let me see like... your pu- let me see your card. No, just a tie. Just a tie. <laughs> Do you not think that's really odd though? You, you think it should be like you, you definitely police? Yeah, yeah, I'm police. Look at <laughs> <Yeah>. my tie. <laughs> well, look, <laughs> see. <laughs> Your move, creep. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's, not, it's still not as good yeah. as the... I think it was in Osaka where the manager, the store manager, tried to rob his own store while wearing like, yes. a face mask. And yeah, and then and then pretended it was a drill, a security drill. <laughs> That's the drill. best story I've ever heard. I need to dig that back out. Uh, yeah. Robbing stuff. his own store, and his staff literally went, Takeshi, is that you? And he went... Uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, it was, uh, yes. it was a test. What did he say? Uh, he walked in with like a knife or something. And he was like, "Give me the money." And they were like, "Wait a yeah. minute, is that is that you, Takeshi? What's going on?" It's like, Crime make it begins up? at home. Crime it was begins all a at home. It was all a drill. <laughs> mm. Wonderful. We got a story this week from the one and only Philip, who begins, "Hello, Hello cantankerous Philip. Chris and perturbed Pete. I recently caught up." On your podcast, and I was intrigued by a story that mirrored my own experience at the Fushimi Inari Shrine in Kyoto, with all the big red Tory gates. In uh, Mm. 2008, a friend and I took a trip to Japan, and Kyoto was our first stop after a few days in Tokyo. Visiting Fushimi Inari Shrine was top of our list, and it was indeed stunning. However, we were unprepared for Kyoto's hills, and were exhausted by the time that we reached the top. It is quite a climb, it's like a 30-40 minute climb up there, if you don't get Mm. mauled to death by wild boars which run amok at the top of that very hill. Uh, <laughs> don't go up there. It decided to take a shortcut back. We ended up lost in the woods and stumbled into a wealthy neighbourhood. A well-dressed businessman had noticed us and stopped to help, and we were sweaty and frazzled and clearly very much out of place. I tried my best to communicate in broken Japanese, and he realised we were very far from the shrine and the train station, so he invited us to wait in his house while he got his car. Crikey. His wife, dressed in a traditional kimono, greeted us and brought out a bag of oranges, which we gratefully accepted. (laughs) The businessman (laughs) soon appeared again and drove us to the train station. It was a lovely ride, discussing baseball in America in broken English. When we arrived at the station, he gave me his card, along with 10,000 yen, which we didn't need, but he insisted on giving. His kindness (laughs) left a lasting impression and shows just how people can be so kind and generous. Ta-ta for now, Philip. And again... Literally last week, the story was Japanese ranked wor- Japan, Japan ranked worst country in the world for helping strangers, and this man <laughs> practically gave them the world. He gave them oranges, he gave them cars, and he gave them literal ten thousand yen money. What the dick is? Why do I never get this sort of treatment? I need to stumble around mm. Kyoto looking bewildered more often. If I get free oranges and money. <laughs> Do you live it just I'll just pretend to be oranges. a stranger and a foranger who's never shoved. lived here. No no Japanese <laughs> and get all the oranges. Yeah. 
My God. Yeah. I mean, like, it, it, maybe that's what you need to sort of spend your time doing. Just kind of, have you got like a face that you would do to make it look like you were a bit confused? Uh, like, you need a big paper. <laughs> be the one I you just need like a big thumbnails. paper map. The, the, the bewildered, yes. shocked expression I. Hate give us, give us the YouTube thumbnail. face for bewildered man. <gasps> oh. 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 oh, oh no! Oh. Give me the oranges. <laughs> yeah. Fucking give hell. me the oranges. Uh, 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 <laughs> need oranges. <laughs> I mean that's amazing I hope it's a real story Brilliant. It always seems too good to be true right The bit where his yeah. wife dressed in a kimono greeted us It does sound like Philip almost had a dream About what it would mm. be like to go to Kyoto uh, <laughs> And uh, when was this? 2008 Oh okay All right. That <laughs> does, does make sense In 2008 yeah. there was about three tourists coming to Japan And I think Japan was like Oh wow foreign tourists yay And now in Kyoto Have an orange. Everyone and their mum has come over <laughs> And I think, I wonder if you would get the same free oranges, money, and car rides now. Because the, yeah. the man would be yeah, dispensing this this hospitality to an awful lot more people. <laughs> One wonders. One wonders. Yeah. I wonder, I, Good I'd stuff. love to know what, you know, it must have been a very different vibe back then. I first came in mm. 2012. To be fair, the, you know, I guess I got to experience that a little bit um, during COVID, you know, when Kyoto had no Taurus at all and it was a very mm. magical place so I kind of yeah. got a taste of that I didn't get any free oranges but I got a taste of Kato when it wasn't rammed to Dickens but mm. yeah free oranges but we got a story oranges. this week you just want to get yourself an orange I do want you an orange you can afford yeah. an orange Chris you don't yeah. need free oranges drinking this fucking Picari Drink sweat Picari bloody sweat oh do you know what would be nice an orange, you know, like like um, <laughs> an orange. weird, uh, you, you know, um, weird people. They um, they 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 fill um, oranges with um, amyl. Um, <laughs> yeah. they, uh, they you could sort of fill it with like Picari sweat. What a refreshing Ooh. drink! Like a lovely isotonic, slightly salty Ooh. orange drink. Oh, fantastic! Basically, just a a, a one man ball of Lucasade. Love it. I'm not buying. Get involved, this. Triv. Well, I will say, not buying this. a lot of markets like Kanazawa Market. They have this thing where you have mm. an orange. And mm. they, you, you pick your orange, and then they yeah. put a blender like inside the orange, and go, and it minces the inside of the orange, and you stick right. a straw in, and you got like a beautiful fresh orange juice drink, drink. from a real orange, and the, the oh, orange is the cup, so you're saving the environment. That's physics, that is. It's good stuff. Yeah. Good shit. That's, that's really cool. It's my favourite market in Japan. I can't remember what it's called. It's Hiroba Yokocho, maybe? It's it, it's in right. it's in uh, Kanazawa. Go there. Go there and right. enjoy it. Now, mm. I don't know if you know, but when you go to a shop in Japan, before just before closing time, in the last five, ten minutes, they'll play the song Old Lang Syne. Do you, do you know this, mm. right? You've experienced it. I've heard, yeah. I, I, I mean... I guess my timings uh, are such that I'm usually in shops as they close because I uh, love a lion and um, and I'm usually there when, when the shops close. So yeah, I, I am familiar with that kind of like little bit of announcement and then a little bit of music, which is a lovely, it's, it's a lovely sort of gamified, it, it just reminds me of a video game kind of, it's things things are kind of like shutting down and, and it plays a little song as, as, as they sort of, basically saying, get yourself to the till, um, we're closing it's down. It's a polite fuck off, get out of yeah. my shop. But it's yeah. 15 minutes before closing time, you're here. It's a really cheap, royalty-free old Lang Syne used throughout the land. Alas, mm. uh, apparently, because foreign tourists don't know this is a thing, uh, mm. some stores are changing the music. Fill us in, Mr. Dawson. What's going on at Daiso, the 100 yen store that I love and which is now <laughs> going to get rid of old Lang Syne? Yeah, well, I mean, so Old Lang Syne, or as the Japanese um, call its um, Daiso equivalent, Hot, uh, Hotaru no Hikari, the light of the fireflies, which basically says um, that um, people who work late, their work, their endeavours are lit only not by candle, not by gaslight, not by electric light, but by the fireflies themselves. So it has an inherent feeling of, of closure and everything sort of shutting down. It's mm. late at night. Um, so, it, yeah, the, the song was written back in... Um, 1881 so it's a real part of um, Japanese uh, the Japanese society's fabric um, and Daiso are one such store that uses this song um, at the end of the day uh, but they've decided to drop it because foreign tourists the foreign tourists it's the foreign because it's the foreign tourists they're back go. and they're causing trouble um, they've decided to drop it because foreign tourists often don't realise what it's meant to signify I mean I will say 
<laughs> like Japan is quite noisy. There's just music being played constantly at you. Um, but they've teamed up with in-store mu- music provider Usen, uh, U-S-E-N, uh, you know them, um, to create a new closing <laughs> song titled Good Day Closing Music. Oh, <laughs> so chin, we've it? got a new bit of music that is not Auld Lang Syne anymore. Because Auld Lang Syne, even in the West is about closure and new mm. beginnings and sort of and sort of seeing something out aren't they so um yeah that's uh, that's that's quite funny but um yeah uh, they, they, they've started um because of those damn foreign tourists who don't understand uh when enough is enough uh they've decided to make a new song uh, called a uh, good day closing music chris are you going to miss old lang syne i hate the song for many reasons. First of all, I hate the New Year's celebrations where everyone like dances around, holds hands, listens to Old Lang Syne. I always mm. try and avoid New Year's. I go and sit in a room and don't do anything. I'm pretty, I just mm. drink, eat some cheese, job done. So I yeah. don't really like Old Lang Syne. And I don't. And then so it used to really piss me off when Store started playing it. So it actually was quite effective. I, it's the one song I yeah. didn't want to hear. And so hearing it, I'd, I'd leave the store and throw myself out of a window. Um, mm. I feel like they could, they should, we should license too much volcano though, because then people would, well, I suppose they'd want to stay there, wouldn't they, for such a banging soundtrack? <laughs> Probably. Hearing yeah, Nesky yeah. singing. But I don't know, what song would you use to cast people out onto the street to, to encourage them um, to, to piss off? But a cannibal cops, <laughs> really, really <laughs> offensive. Some, uh, yeah, some really aggressive kind of uh, uh, metal. Some, some kind of like mad, um, sort of death metal from from Norway. <laughs> dark, dark metal or something. Just an aqua. Get an aqua song. Yeah, Dr. James. Aqua, aqua on the, yeah. Dr. James. Get out, get out. Danger Boys. Something, some gaudy music from the 90s. That'll do the yeah. trick. I mean, just, or just somebody saying in English. We're closing in fifteen minutes. <laughs> Do you want to go and go yourself? I mean, if we're if we're that much of a problem, maybe just indulge us with a bit of English. <laughs> yeah, that might solve the issue. I, I just, yeah. I, this is a ridiculous story because yeah. I don't know. But they also do say over the top of Old Lang Syne, please get out of the shop. So there is no... <laughs> it's not as as vague or mystifying. Uh, yeah. It's many people that live here, I think. They know when I hear Old Lang Syne, no matter where I am in Japan, I know it's time to... To, th- to throw myself out a window um, so mm, okay. I'm going to miss it bring it back uh, we'll be back in just a moment guys with <laughs> stories comments and questions over in the fax machine wow and we're back with the fax machine what have we got this week from our listeners Mr Dawson fill us in we got a message from uh, Braden. Hello, Braden. Uh, dear Chris and Pete, in the future I have a, uh, the opportunity to work on an American military base in Japan. What is Japan's perception of US military bases in Japan? Mm. Do you ever hear anybody who talk about the US bases in Japan? Best wishes, Braden. Did I read somewhere a list of bars? It might actually, you know what? It might have been Korea, but I, I, for some reason, I was looking for somebody asked um, about a bar I'd been to in um, Seoul, mm. um, in uh, in Itaewon, and I um, tried to find which one I was talking about online, and I stumbled upon an official U.S. Army Naval um, list of bars you're not allowed to go in right. as a Marine, as an officer. And I'm just wondering, presumably down in Okinawa, they have that similar sort of thing um, that you're not allowed to... Sort of, but, but presumably Okinawa is just absolutely heaving with, with Marines going off and about. Okinawa, I mean... where they want. Yeah, they're everywhere because Okinawa's mm. got like a Canada... Uh, sorry, Kad- Kadena Air Force Base. Mm. And right. it's massive. It's quite important. Um, unfortunately, uh, Okinawans don't like... <laughs> don't like the military presence there at all. It's very much mm. sort of forced upon them, right? Um, yeah. And Okinawa, it kind of sees itself as its own sort of sovereign state in some some respects because up until uh, the 20th century, it was part of the mm. Ryukyu Kingdom, which is the most tongue-twisty name of anywhere, the Ryukyu Kingdom. And then Japan went, you're ours now and sort of took it over a little bit um, but yeah no yeah. The, the the Air Force base there's massive and the, there's always problems and the locals are always trying to get rid of it but there's no way on earth they can they can possibly get rid of it um, whereas right. that doesn't that animosity doesn't exist as much on the mainland because uh, you can fit 
you know, a naval base in Yokosuke, you can have an air base down in Iwakuni without causing too many problems. It's just Okinawa, mm. I find that sort of level of animosity exists. Um, right. So bear that in mind. But then I, that won't manifest itself. If you were if you were stationed in Okinawa, I don't think it would ever really affect your daily life there, outside of mm. sporadic news stories and the odd protest. But, um, mm. yeah, don't worry mm. about it. we got one here from <laughs> California Gin, who says, Hello, Chris and Pete. I watched Chris's recent video. And I wanted to ask whether either of you have a preferred or recommended home station along the Yamanote line. I have a trip this November and I'm still deciding which station might be the best to use as a home base for my five days Ooh. in the city. Keep up the good work, California Gin. Uh, I, well, it, it literally mm. just depends on the hotel, really. I am a man yeah. of no nation. I go whichever has the cheapest hotel, to be honest. Sometimes <laughs> it's Cortanda, sometimes it's... Ueno, it's usually Ueno to be honest, but uh, yeah, and Shinjuku has a lot of hotels as well, at a decent price. So I'd, mm. I'd take a look at where you want to spend most of your trip um, and work it out from there. But for the most part, Shinjuku, Asakusa, they're the ones to go for. Sorry, not Asakusa, yeah. Ueno. Um, where do you normally go? You normally go to Shibuya, don't you? Big bad Shibuya. Usually Shibuya. I think. I think. Um, I've done Shinjuku as well. I mean, Yoyogi. I mean, there's not that many hotels near Yoyogi, mm. obviously, because it's a big bloody park. But um, yeah, anywhere around there is absolutely a cracking. Because I think sort of once you sort of, I think Shinjuku to Ikebukuro, you're like, oh, that that took a little bit of time. And if I, if you were trying to get to like Akihabara, it's like it's. I mean, obviously, you're not going to take. You're going to take the Chuo line, but like. Um, uh, or the Sobu line but like it, going all the way around the Yamanote line to Akihabara is a bit of a pain in the bum um, so it's it's a lot quicker to just go straight across but uh, yeah uh, yeah I'd, 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 I'd um, there's just, it's just I mean what is over east I mean it's just a a couple of temples and a, a big palace isn't it really I suppose filth temples and a palace <laughs> Bruh, disgusting temples and a palace rubbish oh, absolute yeah. nonsense <laughs> One last question from Pete from America. He says, hello, Chris and Pete. Again, Pete. We have our first trip planned from early October. A food-centric whirlwind trip around central and southern Japan. Would it be rude to bring a lightweight camping chair with us for sitting whilst uh, in <laughs> long ramen shop lines? Thank you in advance, Pete from America. That cannot be a serious question. Nobody brings yeah. a chair to, to queue up for ramen. <laughs> Honestly, the queues can be bad, but for the most part, you know, you'll be queuing for like 20 minutes or so. Don't worry about right. it. Unless you're going to some sort of Michelin star wonder restaurant, in which case, yeah, you might have to key for hours. But no, it's it's just a bit weird and not rude, but I think just bewildering. I think people will be like, what the fuck are they doing? Bring the camping chair. Yeah. So unless you've got like a disability, in which case, perfectly understandable uh, if you need to sit down. Mm. But it's not so much rude as baffling. I think you'll baffle the locals if you bring a chair <laughs> to do such a thing. But uh, keep the stories, questions, comments coming in to Abroad Japan Podcast at gmail.com or let us know down in the comments on YouTube. But for now, guys, have yourself a great few days. We'll see you right back here, camping chair in hand on the Abroad <laughs> Japan Podcast. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>